Well, good morning, dear. Welcome back. Today, uh, this is lecture number 17, and today we are going to discuss one of the very important issues of logistic regression. That is how to design the cost function. And as you know, like linear regression, the designing a cost function is very, very important because only using that we get the parameters, right? In the process of optimizing that curve, we uh, get the parameters. And the problem of designing the cost function, as you know, is a little bit uh, tricky. And uh, I tried to uh, convince you in my last class that the, the um, predictors in logistic regression actually is designed in such a way that is a logistic function or S function, whatever you can call, so that the samples belonging to the two class will be separated widely and they will be located only in the two asymptotes. So that there is no question of misclassification. Okay. And not only that, we had also a threshold. Okay. Okay. We had also a threshold. Just, uh, just to remind you, you all know. know. So this was our, uh, sorry. Okay, this was our. This was our. Uh, and this was our y equal to zero y equal to 1 and this is a threshold 0 0.5 and as you know we ensured by using this curve we ensured that the samples will be here belonging to the two class class 1 class 0 samples are here and even the samples are in between because of this threshold and because this uh, predictor is calculating explicitly the probability uh, that a sample probability of any sample belonging to a particular class that is what it is computing explicitly so you will get a definite answer right that's the reason we are using this kind of uh, predictors uh, as a sigmoid function but in the process you what you ended up you ended up in getting a very bad um, uh, cost function. It was not um, convex in nature and uh, it, since it was not convex then it was very difficult uh, uh, to use for tuning the parameter. So that was the problem you all understood. And that all using entropy, Shannon's entropy concept also, I uh, tried to convince you that this threshold point is very very important okay because implicitly as you know the nature of this function implicitly this uh, this predictor also design the decision boundary and decision bound where the decision boundary should lie okay if i have two classes say this is uh, x1, x2, I have uh, two classes, okay. So, where I should uh, design the decision boundary? Here, where the threshold is 0 0.5. Why? Why not to create a decision boundary here? Because that will be useless. Uh, there is no uncertainty. The entropy is telling um, and our common sense is also telling that you need to take a decision when you are not certain. If no decision is required to be taken here, because I know the sample belongs to the class 0, here there is no need of taking decision because and, and the entropy um, uh, will be minimum in all those cases like you see entropy here. So this belongs to say uh, samples belonging to class 0, these are the samples belonging to the class 1. So as you are approaching towards the class, definitely and then entropy is decreasing 
So here is the point where entropy is maximum. Okay, and we want our decision boundary should be drawn at this point. Okay, uh, here. Okay, at this point, so that implicitly uh, that sigmoid function is actually uh, helping us to draw the decision boundary. So having said that, uh, now let us see how can we um, design the cost function. Now well, philosophically, designing the cost function. Um, the philosophy remains the same. That means I have a predictor. This is a predictor, okay? And this is the actual, okay? Predicted value and actual value. Hmm? Actual value. So I will have to design a predictor in such a way that predictor predicts the correct one, okay? So the difference between them should be minimum. And that's all we are we were also doing in um, uh, linear regression, but there we simply uh, did predictor like this and put this. This was actually error, and we are squaring, and we are getting a beautiful curve like this. Okay, that is what it was happening uh, in um, uh, case of uh, linear regression. Okay, linear. Regression. While philosophically it remains the same, that means here also in logistic regression also we need uh, that predictor should predict the actual value. The difference between them, what it is predicting and what is the ground truth should be very, very similar, should be close, right? So we are designing a cost function, say JW, which will find the difference between these two, okay? And still we will get the uh, good cost, uh, cost function. So here is the trick which we are doing. Very minutely and carefully look at this uh, diagram. Say this is y equals to 1 representing y equal to 1 plus and this y axis is representing y equal to 0 plus and here is my predictor okay h x parameters by w. So, since it is calculating probability, its value will lie between 0 and 1. So, so far so good. Now, say, uh, what should be the nature of this curve? Okay. We have exponential family, we have straight line, we have many things. So, we are looking for exponential family. The reason is obvious, I am going to tell you. Using this philosophy, what is that philosophy? that if predictor and actual are same then no penalty that means no cost no cost is involved okay but if this is telling lie or it is telling something different than what actual is i will penalize and that will be manifested in the cost function in the form of increasing the cost clear see so this is the curve which is doing that okay the more so you see here the actual was ground truth was one, predator is telling one, so no cost, cost is zero, no penalty, no cost. Now as it is going predictor value is something and the actual value that is this is the curve for y equal to one, actual value is something, predictor value is something, so this is the error and this is the cost, so cost is increasing, okay. This is very intuitively designed, you know. The cost is increasing, cost is increasing, ever increasing and always, you know, this is exponential curve, why we are uh, using it? You see, actual ground truth is a sample belongs to a class y equal to 1 and my predictor is telling, no, it belongs to a class 0. So absolutely rubbish it is uh, telling. So that's why I am giving very large penalty manifested in the cost function as huge cost. If you do that, you, if your predictor is predicting 0 while a sample belongs to a class 1, then the cost function, uh, the value of the cost will be huge. So this is the curve which is representing intuitively that fact. Similar is the case here for 0 class. I have 2 class, remember. So here, the sample belongs to a class 0 and predictor is telling 0. 
So for the sample, so there is no cost involved, cost is zero, and when the differences are increasing, cost is increasing, that is penalty is increasing, and is manifested by increasing the cost in the cost function. And exponentially the cost is huge when predict, uh, a sample belongs to a class uh, y equal to zero, and predictor is telling no, it belongs to a class one. Clear? So this is a huge in this direction, in this direction. So I think this is clearly understood, right? So these are the cost increasing, ever increasing cost, ever increasing cost, ever increasing cost, okay? So you understood that, okay? So now let us see, very interesting story. Can we have those kind of function in our mathematics? It turns out that in exponential series, exponential family, we have such function. Okay, the function is actually is depicted here. So now we are constructing our cost function equals to this is actually uh, in the exponential family this is minus a log of h w x i. Okay. So if y equal to one, this is the Okay, so this is very very simple, and similarly, this is this is the curve uh, log of uh, one minus x. Okay, minus log of one minus x represents this curve. So these two curve we have. Let us draw this two curve and this two curve incorporates our predictors and predictors, inside predictors, what we have? We have function uh, parameters which we need to, you see, inside the predictor what we have? This parameter, okay? So that's done. Having said that, I can now construct my cost function, this is the cost function, okay? cost. So it's very, very intuitive in nature, right? Cost function. But it's very important to understand that a predictor is predicting something which is not the ground truth, cost will be high. A predictor is telling uh, something which is closer to the ground truth, cost will be uh, less. Okay. And these two cost curve, very interesting, is intersecting at a point. Okay, here is the entropy business coming into the picture concept. Okay, so here what is the value of h x parameters by w? The value is 0 0.1. Okay, 0. Uh, 0 0.5. Sorry, 0 0.5. That is very, very uncertain. Okay, at this point, the predictor is confused uh, that the equal probability that a sample uh, can belong to a um, zero class or one class okay so that's why this is the point of interest having maximum entropy you see 0 0.5 is the probability is this entropy is maximum and we uh, need that point because this also represent the minimum cost okay optimum cost okay because these two curves have a common point here. So now let us, can you see intuitively how the curve looks like? If we neglect this one, okay, curve looks like this. So neglecting this, making this curve means we need to stitch these two uh, function, okay, this one and this one. Beautifully, that you know is mathematics, right? Uh, we we have stitched these two function to represent the cost function J W, which is now equals to we have attached. Uh, this represents uh, class um, Y say so we have attached Y log of uh, H X parameters by W minus one minus Y. Sorry, one minus Y. 
only matters. This is this y i has only two values, zero and one. Okay, log of one minus h. So this is the function which we are looking for. Okay, and this function has beautiful nature again. This is the nature of the function. Okay. Okay. So, so, so this is my cost function is now looks like this. Okay. And this is my logistic regression cost function and again it turns out to be like this. Beautiful, right? It has global optimum, minimum point here. So this point has maximum entropy, means most information is here. So we are tuning our parameters which actually make a decision boundary which will pass through the maximum information point for classification. Okay, this is very intuitive, very common sense, right? As I have told that. Um, so, uh, this is the function now. Once I have this function, again, same old story, okay? So, this is a function of what? Uh, predictor. What is there inside predictor? We have W, okay? Here we have W. So, this function is, nature is like this. So, this is called uh, logistic cost function and now we are ready to run gradient descent algorithm and to figure out all the parameters. So that's the story, I think uh, very elegant story, very important uh, and not so difficult to understand but uh, you should appreciate it is based on intuition and uh, which whose return is very very high. So now we need to what we need now once we have got this function okay uh, I need to run gradient descent algorithm that is j assigned earlier wj minus alpha That's it. As many features are there, that many parameters will be there, and henceforth it is already you know, okay. Uh, just like logistic, uh, sorry, linear regression. So logistic regression only speciality is the function is tricky. The function is designed in this way, which is based on intuition and serve our purpose. Okay. That's it for today, and I show. Uh, good luck, stay safe and now we will do um, assignments based on this, uh, stay safe and goodbye.